Uh, okay, everybody, uh, I have here Eyal Amon, who is an investment advisor, branch manager at Manulife Securities. Eyal, thank you so much for uh, being with me and joining me in this call. My pleasure. Yep. So I have a lot of people who are calling me in regards to real estate questions, but I know a lot of them also have, uh, you know, investment stock uh, market questions. So I figured who's the best person to answer that, uh, you. Uh, so the first question is, how do you find that the market is reacting to the current uh, situation? Well, uh, the market has reacted terribly to the current situation, as we all know. Yeah. Uh, but it's not really reacted to the pandemic. It, it really reacts to the economic situation or what the pandemic will bring, right? So governments uh, had to make a choice. Do we save lives or do we save the economy? Uh, they chose for the right reason lives. And so in order to save lives, we really, really had to stop the economy. They did it in China. China was under quarantine for 76 days, but I mean a real quarantine, not like yeah. ours is like, uh, you know, self, <laughs> self isolation. There, you know, you get out of your house, you get shot. <laughs> yeah, not quite, but uh, you know, they, they were very strict on their on their um, measures. So, in seventy six days, they kind of got a hold of the virus. Now, uh, as you can see in, in in America, they've already surpassed China and will continue to because you know we're not a dictatorship and we cannot force people to stay home yet. Yeah. Um, but what we can do is we, and that's what government did, is um, basically stop the economy. So they asked us to stay at home. Uh, no, nobody wants to travel anyway. So you've had uh, airlines, forget it, they couldn't, they couldn't fly. Uh, hotels were empty. So that's the first, that's the first phase. But, um, you know, slowly, slowly, you know, like, just take yourself, for example, you can't show houses. Well, you can't show houses, you can't sell houses. Yeah. Uh, you know, stores, well, nobody's coming to the stores. So it's, it's just going to affect a lot of levels in, in, in the whole economy. And the market, knowing that, uh, the market reacted, as it should, pretty bad. And so at some point, our, uh, our stock market, the TSX, was down 35%. Wow. Um, you know, as of today, it's down 22, but it was as, as bad as 35. Uh, so you had, you know, banks selling a 35, 40% discount to their high. And you had companies, good companies that would not even be affected by this COVID-19. Like, uh, I don't know, what does Bell Canada have to do with COVID-19, right? Yeah. Um, but even Bell Canada stock was down 25%. Uh, it's, it's. It's just going to affect, it, it's affecting the market. It's affecting the market uh, quite a bit. Quite a bit. And based on... But not uh, only that, it also... No, go. It also, what, what also happened was um, you have a lot of hedge funds that, in, that invest in stocks all over the world. And so all these hedge funds, they borrow money to invest. That's, yeah. that's most of their thing, right? So they borrow money to invest. But when ah. things go bad, the lenders want their money back. It's called yeah. the margin call because, you know, they're saying, hey, 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 now my money's at risk. Pay me some of my money back. Well, and it's all contractual. So how do they sell? How do they pay some money back? Well, they have to sell stocks. So stocks are down and then a bunch of people trying to unload a lot of stocks. And that's what happened. That's when it's down 35%. Wow. So based on the previous crises that we had, I think 9-11, uh, 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 the market crash of 2008, how does this compare? Well, luckily, I lived through uh, all three of them. <laughs> um, this one, well, first of all, the, the 2008 financial crisis was a financial crisis. Yeah. So, no, that's bad loans, uh, banks behaving badly, insurance companies uh, insuring things that they couldn't insure, and, and it was just a whole big mess. Um, it took a long time, it took a good year, at least more than a year to fix that problem. Um, this one is different because it wasn't a financial crisis. It's just, a, it's actually a, we chose to make it a financial crisis, right? Yeah. Because we want to save lives. So um, it's different. The market's not as bad as it, as it was in 2008. In 2008, the market was down 50%. Now we've seen 35 Again, as of today, we're at 22. Um, 
we could see 50% drop. You know, it's not a, we're not out of the woods just because the sun is shining and it looks like a beautiful day outside. Yeah. Uh, we could test the lows and we can go down even lower than we were a week ago. So, so based on uh, people who are listening to this, uh, should they sell, buy, hold or position? What's your recommendation? Well, that's a very specific question. And, and the, reason, the reason it is, is I wouldn't answer the same question to a person who's 30 years old than sure. to a person who's 70 years old. Um, if you're in your 30s and 40s, you're in your accumulation stage, you're just buying, you're not selling anything. You're putting money into your RSPs, you're putting money into your TFSA. You have no, if you have a, a, a job that, you know, again, all this, assuming you have a job that will yeah. remain, right? Uh, so if you don't need money anytime soon, then you're just a buyer. It doesn't matter. The price doesn't really matter. You're selling in 20, 30 years. Guaranteed in 20, 30 years, prices will be higher than they are today. Um, but if you're in your 60s and 70s and you need this money for retirement and um, you need some cash flow, then it wouldn't be a bad idea to take some money off the table, at least money that you'll need in the next year or two, and then let the rest can stay in the market, but at least the next two or even three years, take that money out so that you can, you don't have, if the market falls from here, well, the market's down 22 today, but if the market's down 50 and you left your money there and you're 70 years old, well, all that money lost money, right? Lost money. So, so you want to take some of the cash flow that you want in the next couple of years, you can take that out. Take that out. But normally I would say, do not sell. It's, you, you never sell in a market like this because it's panic selling. When do you sell? You know, did you sell last week when it was minus 35? Did you sell two weeks ago when it was minus 15? Like, you know, when do you, when do you panic? When do you panic? Okay. All right. If you yeah. bought, if, if you, by the way, if you bought, bought stocks yeah. on last Friday or this Monday, early in the morning, you're already up about 18%. Wow. Okay. If the market bounced back 18%. Yeah. yeah. And that just shows you that it's, you're better off like I said, in the accumulation stage, don't worry about this. It's a good time to pick up companies at a good, good price. Um, you got banks in, in Canada paying five, six, seven percent dividends. You know, it, it's dividend yields are high. It's it's going to last for for a long time. Banks are not going to cut their dividends. Uh, they they definitely don't have that. In in fact, they just uh, had an, uh, an interview today with uh, the president of the one of the major banks, and he said. No way, we're not, get, we're not going to cut dividends. And their profits are much more than the dividends that they're actually paying. Okay. So even their profits were cut off by half, they would still have money to pay us the dividend. dividend. So I know you don't have a crystal ball, but where do you see the market going in the next uh, 6, 12, 18 months? What do you mean I don't have a crystal ball? Uh, <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's hard to say what the market is going to be in the next six months or in the next 12 months. It really depends on, on uh, how deep this pandemic hits um, and how long we have to close the economy to accommodate for that pandemic to kind of go through us. And, you know, when they say um, we, want to, we want to flatten the curve, it's because ultimately most of us will probably get this virus sooner or later. But the problem is if we all get it at once, and sure. we collapse the whole system, right? So I think that at some point when, when, when we kind of pass the first big phase, maybe governments will, say, will ease a little bit the getting back to work or they'll do it in, a, in, in some fashion that, that they, they, seem, they deem uh, reasonable. Um, it really depends on how fast the economy gets back to, to work. If the economy doesn't get to, gets back to work, well, why would the stock market go up right sure stock market needs the economy so we'll see time will tell but i'm sure we'll be okay awesome well thank you very much Ayal, for answering these questions but hold and on my crystal yeah, ball again yeah go go ball. go yeah you have one i <laughs> <laughs> i think that in five years we'll be much higher than uh, than we are today yeah okay so i'm putting my money with you then there you go. <laughs> awesome thank you very much Ayal, and have a great day be safe my pleasure Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.